Well, hey, everybody, welcome to a special edition of the Wednesday live stream with the shower door pros. It's just, uh, it's special because, um, because you guys are so special. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Hey, if you are watching us in uh, the Facebook page, you can just click on the link and it will direct you over here into the Zoom call. And uh, we'll just doing? get you plugged in and you can join us and ask questions, make comments, but uh, be on your best behavior, right? Because, you know, this is a professional. Don't forget about the professional part. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm having some weird, like, I was having some weird internet issues, which is weird because I've got, should have a really super fast connection, but you know, you know how it is these days. Uh, but uh, so far, so good. It seems to be working out. Rob's got my back. If something happens to me, man, he'll just take control. So I feel pretty pretty confident. So anyway, I see that uh, Christina is visiting Shannon over there. Oh, what, what's you going know? on, you guys? Aloha. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you having a Hawaiian party or what? Yep, wow. Hawaiian I crashed uh, Shannon's party, so um, yeah, I'm up in Portland, and Shannon is nice enough to uh, host me for a couple of days, and we're actually going to go see a marketing person we both use tomorrow for a conference and all sorts of things, so we've got a lot going on up here, so, um, but yeah, is it time for the co-op update? Yeah, let's do that, co-op update. Yeah, sounds awesome. good. Um, I don't have my notes right this second, but I can say with I everything. Um, Chris was awesome and generous enough to uh, reach out to some vendors and partners um, that we, we know and love. And um, we have a sponsor partner for the co-op event at Glass Build. Can I announce that yet, Chris? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, and that he, is going to be 310. Temp yeah. <laughs> yeah. 310. So that's Greg. And that's the phantom, the, the guy who makes the phantom slider. So he had a call mm -hmm. with us a few months back where he reviewed all of that. And I think everyone's had glowing things to say about the phantom slider um, and, and Greg and his products and their fabrication facility. So um come on down to glass build and join us we're going to be at top golf on monday night of glass build celebrating the co-op celebrating shower door professionals as a whole um whether you're in the co-op or don't want to be in the co-op or whatever um just come on down to glass build and come have fun with us so it's going to be a great time and yeah. there's that yeah we've had that top or Chris, you know, why, why go to glass build? And it probably bears repeating at least a little bit so that people who are going, I don't know, should I really be there? No, yes, you should be there. Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. The people that you know, on this call, and you hear on this call, and it, they really make the whole event worthwhile. So it's, it's worth it. And all your vendors, all your connections, they deepen by going there in person. So definitely go to glass build, and then come to our event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's one part of it. Um, the second part of it is um, I, the people who have filled out the form. Thank you so much. I see you. I've looked at we we as a collective have been looking at you guys. We're um, so ready to accept members. There's some like red tape that we've got to jump through with the secretary of state in Georgia and all sorts of things. And I promise it's coming. But I we can't accept members until we have these things that will have to go in line and they mm -hmm. take some time. So. Um, it's all coming. I'm going to try to put together an email at least to send that says, Hey, you know, we'd like to have you join the co-op if you'd like to join kind of you thing, but we can't accept any funds. Yeah. That's a good way to say it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, and then did I miss anything else, Chris? No, you're, you're doing good. You're doing good. Right. I think that's all I've got, but we're, We've got so many good opportunities and uh, been talking to a lot of people and it, it's been it's been a good time. So lots of good prospects. Yes. And I want to say hello to everybody, but now I got to go schmooze. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Awesome. Yep.
Awesome. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be like 75 spots um, for at, at Top Golf. So, I mean, that we should be able to get a bunch of people. I don't know how many people will be attending class build from our group, but um, there should be plenty of room for, you know, everybody. So we'll figure out a way to kind of RSVP so we know how many spots, you know, are available. And then probably at at the event might be able to, you know, invite a couple friends or something like that, you know. Um, so we'll uh, keep you up to date as we go. We'll, we'll post, uh, we'll make an official event in Facebook um, where we can, you know, post all the data and should be a lot of fun. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff happening. So anyway, with that, I am, uh, I don't know, wondering what, uh, what's going on with you guys? Anything exciting happening? Any um, topics that you guys want to explore? Anybody? Does anybody does anybody have a uh, like a transcript or um, like a cheat sheet for your um, your office personnel when customers call requesting like a shower door like a like okay. a script of some sort? Yeah, like because I have like my office we we have six people here that work in the office and mm -hmm. you know everybody responsible responsibility to answer the phone we got one person that's designated for it but when that person is is busy then it goes down the line to everybody else yeah. and so okay. since we do everything else, we do shower doors commercial uh ig units we do the whole spectrum of glass mm -hmm. um the only th except for auto glass we don't do that but uh the thing is i'm having issues with when people call and ask like questions about shower doors and when they take a phone call usually they just do like name number and that's it or they'll it's like kind of like like i want to have like a list of a line what kind of questions i ask the customers i don't know if anybody i haven't really had time to sit down and really make my own i just want to know if somebody already has one where i mean i can just cheat off you and maybe <laughs> modify it oh you have one i have one i'll send you yeah, yeah. it's just a, a for each customer that calls or comes into the shop either way you have to fill out a form it's just a you know eight by ten piece of paper and of course yeah. it's name but other contact information and then we ask them questions about what stage are they have they started the build is it completed what phase yeah. are they in because a lot of times yeah. they come in or they call and they want us to come and the shower's not even built yet so they're mm -hmm. getting the exactly. car before the course you know so not that we want to tell them call us later we still want to keep their contact information you know and follow up with them but it just asks the basic questions where they are at in their build what type of materials they're using tile fiberglass because a lot of people think they're going to put in a fiberglass and come get you know half inch heavy glass you know slider or something so we have to educate them so it asks those type of questions what kind of finishes they're using what type of materials um what their availability is for us to come out and measure and um, anyway, it's it's probably maybe 15 questions. And then we turn it over to our sales rep. And then he calls them and schedules his own appointment. Mm -hmm. Well, we put it in follow up, too. We put all their information in follow up. So, you know, if we lose that piece of paper, we'll have it. But some exactly. of the girls are so fast, they just sit there and type it in follow up instead of writing it down, you know. So mm -hmm. but I can send you a copy of it. Yeah, yeah, it'd be great because yeah, you know, um, yeah, because sometimes the, the customer will call in. Oh, I'm about to remodel my bathroom. You know, can you come out yeah. and you know help me design it? Well, my yeah. people will put you know need estimate for a shower door. Okay, if I know it's just a consultation to to help them. You know, design it. I we charge for that, mm -hmm. and I can't you know get out of the truck. Go oh okay, well you need help designing. I'll be charged for this. I'm, it's already past that. I can't do that anymore. Because that's my office job. They should have done that and let them know if they wanted to do that. Um, so right. because then you got because you got your design and then you got your estimate. And those two are different. They're not the same thing. Uh -huh. um, so can you go help and you know somebody design something? You you're not gonna you might not get the job and you know you all right you know and yeah. 
but we charge for that. You know, I charge a hundred dollars to go out and I'll, oh. and I even tell the customers, you know, I'll credit you the hundred dollars if we get the job, you know, so you'll end up sure. getting that back in the job. But like, but if they're ready for it and they're done with the, all the construction and they just need an estimate, then that's where we don't charge for that. That's just, you know, it's an estimate, you know. But sometimes yeah. those those consultations can take one, two hours sometimes. I used to spend like three hours one time doing one and they ended up getting a job. I was kind of like, oh God, you know, all right. Dude yeah. ended up buying some, he, some, you know, some piece of crap from Home Depot and doing it himself. I'm like, all right. Yeah, well, I... that we kind of we have uh probably five or six builders that don't buy. I mean, they don't buy from anybody but us. So we know we're going to get the job, mm-hmm. and so we tell them to call one of them, and then they'll come out and design it and build it for them, and then they call us on the end to get the glass. Yeah, th- those usually call me directly. My contractors call me directly, which I don't mind, you know, because I, I like to keep those those customers close to me. And then, but if you get yeah. like your, yeah. if you get your everyday walk through the front door or somebody that's looking for it, like, then that, yeah, but we don't take care of that. Yeah, they don't have a builder. They don't even know anybody to do yeah. remodel work. So they're looking for someone to help them. So that's how we, we handle that. Mm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So Adrian, are you working in follow-up too? Yeah, I got follow-up. Yeah. That's what I thought. I so. So yeah, yeah. I mean, follow up will help you with that because okay. you can you can kind of get it set up um, the way that you do your um, you know the way that you get follow up. Well, Robert can can, can address it. You know, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever you could. Have, we have unlimited uh, email text templates that we're able to populate for you with images or typical emails you might attach, and it starts with just your normal pictures you want to send them for the inline you're trying to describe to them or the slider or and after about 30 40 product pictures we then started adding a lot of faq so sometimes you always send somebody your warranty documentation or uh, your commonly asked questions or a graph that explains your five-step process or a picture of what clear and starfire looks like so all the variations of answers you would give customers in picture form or in text form we try to like stamp it, copy it, create the variations you need, and then teach your staff how to search for it easy. Because it's one thing to have all these things. It's another thing to be able to find them quick enough to use them. Uh, yeah. when you need them. And that's where naming your, naming whatever you do is super important in your business uh, to make sure it's clear, it's organized, you're, you're following some sort of structure. And in three months when you forget you ever did it, you'll be able to type in the right keywords that'll pop it right back up to the front of your feed. And that's kind of this concept behind our Google Drive, behind our storage systems, and mainly these templates that you want to start creating. Um, it's easy to find your shower pictures, and you name them all different until you have 50 of them, and then you have 50 wines, and then 30 other variations of answers. So when you start naming them correctly, you just teach your staff, hey, you want to find everything you need to know about a 90 degree? Type in 90. Here's the five things that'll pop up. Is it an FAQ question? Is it a product picture question? Or is it a warranty before or after that you might need? So all those things are super important, whether it's a notepad you save on your computer or follow up glass, which I help people use. But no matter what system you're using, there should be something you can do on your computer or your app to pre-stamp what you have and then go back and reference it. Yeah, yeah and I was thinking, too, you could also, if you wanted to, kind of what Lana was talking about for the form, you could create a fillable document on follow up. So when that call comes in and they get the name and the number and the email address of the contact, the customer, potential customer, um, you could send that form right over to them and have them fill everything out, name, address, email, you know, process, um, you know, where they're at in the remodel, you know, if they're just budgeting for getting designs, um, if they're tiled, if it's just framed, you know, finishes, I mean, you can, all, you can list as many questions as you want and let them fill it in. Um, and then you have all the information and then you can go to your templates, you know, for pricing um, and send that right over to them, you know, speed up the process, right? Minimize the yeah. steps. That's the and idea. We, we, yeah, we have that. You know, Robert hooked us up with that one on, on our website. Oh, so not, all, not, not, not as far as that detail. It's just, 
sometimes sometimes but when we get people that call you know sometimes people are not computer friendly whatever they don't they're just they want to talk to you they don't want to talk they don't want to go on the computer they don't want to go on the uh, phone whatever Back when we first started, uh, we started with a lot of products. We did laminated sheets for the office, so we would have a, a lot of the commonly asked questions. We made a nice little graph of it, and before we went digital, we tried to have like three or four of the laminated sheets so that the office had a reference in front of them. It starts with little small notepads, but once you get them, you really want to empower them. We give them like like you would give your shower guy all the tools they need to do the job at your quality level. We try to give the office all the tools they need to deliver the service we would want them to deliver, but they need to know yeah. what we know. So it needs to be clear on a paper and answers that they can do. So every shower answer, common ask ones, graph, and that way they can talk about it as they talk to the customer. But there's usually yeah. like a pile of 10 common questions for every product that you can start piling into a Thank sheet you. and make it easy for them to find. And little by little, it'll come naturally to them. They won't have to reference the sheet anymore. That's hey, true. by the way, what happened to your what happened to your finger? I seen it twice. That <laughs> dog, dog right there. <laughs> I was walking him on a shorter leash than normal. Uh, I was trying to get in his way while he was talking to another dog, and he wrapped around my finger and snapped it. And so I've been I'm right handed, so it's been a fun adventure working full time on the computer with a broken hand. Uh, okay. Yikes! So oh. gotta love my dog. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris, I got a question for the, the group, and it's a little bit off of Adrian, uh, a oh. little bit different from what uh, Adrian asked, but how do you guys maintain enthusiasm or motivate your employees on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, I know some of you are specific to shower doors. I'm kind of like uh, Adrian, and then, well, we do a lot of different things, but shower doors is the biggest component of our business. But, you know, you go, how do you, how do you combat the mundaneness, if you will, of the day to day, and you know, how do you keep the enthusiasm up and the and the mm -hmm. motivation up? I'm just kind of curious as, you know, what, how you guys maybe address you ladies and guys address that mm -hmm. thing. Good question. It's not like it used to be; just a paycheck was enough. But now, no, it's not. Good swift kick in the. No, maybe <laughs> not that. <laughs> um, I don't know. You just take into consideration <laughs> their needs and wants some yeah. to an extent. And, you know, if you, you know, like the other day, I had a guy, you know, you keep him motivated by caring about him more yeah. or less. And yeah. like the other day I had a guy that wanted to get off and mow his lawn. So I said, Hey man, tomorrow, just so you know, you're going to be having an easy day. So if you don't have time to mow the lawn today, you're going to have a half day tomorrow. So we'll just play, just go home and hang out and mow the lawn tomorrow. You know, we're going to, you got an easy day tomorrow, you know, because they don't have really have access to the calendar and stuff like that. So they don't know what's coming the next day, but just caring about them and staying in touch with them and taking care of their needs more than your needs, you know, and that will motivate them. If they know you care about them and you're taking care of them, they'll be motivated. Mm -hmm. I think. Very true. Very true. Um, Mm -hmm. Sounds like a bunch of pansies to me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm, I'm not lying; it is. When I was when I first started working here with my dad, and I had this this older gentleman, this you know old glazer man, and I get out of line, man. He'll let me know there is no holding back. And all these days, he can't say nothing. You know, you need to have like a whole safe space now for uh, your work. Good lord. Yeah. They they'll they'll never they'll never do as many jobs as you can do in a day. Like I mean, if, if you're a business owner or you know, son or something like that, because you'll do everything from sales to HR to installations and stuff like that. So you know, I don't know. You you gotta figure they don't they don't want to do that. They wanna work a lot of people want to work eight hours and go home. They want to do a good job for eight hours and then go home but like me i want to do i want to be all i can be every day i go in it'd be great to find somebody like that because then they can take my spot and i can go on so and if somebody wants to do that they're welcome to come on so but yeah they they need some attention yeah definitely but you know right, rightfully so 
Yeah, we do, I just we feel do like, days you know, on. I'm just, go ahead, we do, uh, if we don't have company-wide PTO during that month, then we do a team day typically in the middle of the month. Our guys stay in for either a full day or a half day, which, you know, we're running seven full crews all the time plus inside guys. So it's roughly, you know, 18 people that would be out doing install. So it's an investment, but we're eating lunch together, uh, spending time together. You know, I've done Bible studies during that time. We've had cornhole tournaments. We've gone bowling on those days. So it's not a huge thing, but it's something just to break up the monotony mm -hmm. uh, because your day's monotonous too. I mean, mine is too. I've been doing the same thing for a long time. So it's going to be monotonous. There's no way around that. Uh, but just changing it up a little bit and giving them something different um, can make a little bit of a difference. I don't know that it, you know, it kills everything, uh, but it's, it, it is a little, a little bit of a light day mixed in. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think that's outstanding. I know. Food. We try to, <laughs> yeah, food is, is, is definitely. Food. No, I, I, <laughs> <on my mind. laughs> I just feel like, you're right. It is mundane. And, and I think I'm with you, Billy, on that. We, I've been trying different things. You know, I've had picnics for Memorial Day, Labor Day, uh, where I do the cooking, uh, yeah. you know, just and, and, and let them, the days, you know, I get, they get paid, they get thanked, they just, just, it's a lighthearted day, but um, it's in those in-between periods um, where, you know, you, you kind of get in a rut, if you will, you know, business is good. It's, we've been very fortunate in that regard. And you, but you start to see the look on their face, like, oh man, it's the same thing here again today. And uh, so your, your comments, I appreciate those comments. Those are, uh, those are valuable. Mike. Uh, yes, sir. You're probably no different than any baseball or football coach that has to keep their team motivated all season long, right? Mm -hmm. They go there in the practices in the very beginning of the year and they get burned out and it's just struggling to get to the end of the year. The difference is it's over at the end of the year. Then it's a whole new year. You're looking for guys for a 10, 15, 20 year career, right? Yeah. So you got to give them the vision of the future. Where can they be within the company? Do you have a path for their success? Do you coach them periodically, bring guys in to coach, uh, show them new products, let them get the input, have meetings and ask them questions. Sometimes it's a matter of persuading them to what you want, but make it look like it's their idea. Hey, we're going to make some changes. I want to rearrange the truck. What do you guys think? You know, how can we make your job? Eat? I'm looking for your feedback. Are these paper towels good? Is this caulking good? Should we get a different caulking gun? Just different things, but when they know they're involved, they have a different attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. huge. But you have to always give them something to look forward to or to be part of. I guess that's the other thing. They want to be part of something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do, people. It seems like people work harder for you know a sense of belonging, a sense of community. Yeah. A sense of ownership on some level, you know, um, then for money. I mean, people think, you know, some people are super motivated. I mean, I'm not going to cut that short, but I think the vast majority of people are more motivated by just um, their, their personal um, human needs, you know, that, that go much, much beyond just like food, mm -hmm. shelter, clothing, you know. People want to be a part of something. And especially these days in our world, you know, it's a little pretty disconnected. Um, there's a real lack of community. There's a real lack of, you know, that tribal, you know, belonging. And so if you can create that um, in your business, I think that that goes a long ways towards making people, um, you know, motivating people to, to want, not want to let the team down. If they really feel like they're a part of the team. And that, you know, the, the team is rising and falling based on their performance. Nobody wants to let the team down. They want to, you know, want to show up for, for the rest of the people at the, of course, I mean, this is just all theoretical. I don't have any of that where I work, but, you know, it's just me here. But, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, I can, I can, uh, 
imagine that, you know, how, how motivating that would be. I mean, it's Perhaps. all about, it's all about motivation, motivation, reward, celebrate successes together, set a goal for the end of the month. You got to have 50 installs or 50 installs with zero incompletions or make it realistic, one or two incompletes. And if they hit that, could be as simple as ordering five pizzas on a Friday mm -hmm. and, and come back. But then they work as a, a team to, and, and it can be small goals. You know, I don't know if 50 is a good number for you or if it's 200, whatever the number is that works out for you. And then, uh, re, you know, what's your pain point? Is it callbacks? Is it uh, service calls altogether? Or you want to bonus the guys for doing service calls, whatever it is, come up with some kind of bonus and, you know, again, have them sit in on a meeting, say, look, it, I want to do something for you guys to keep you involved. Give me some ideas. Let them buy into it. I like, I like that, Bill. Um, another thing that I thought about doing and trying to figure it out is how to get the guys, if they choose to be involved in some sort of community activities, like where, you know, how you're Billy talking about cooking for them and stuff like that, but maybe okay. picking a day, every quarter of the every quarter in going out and supporting some sort of non-for-profit kind of thing where you habitat for humanity or something like that and like hey man if you come help us with this we give pay you for the day or something like that um but to volunteer your time or or not you know it's like it's volunteer so but however you want to do it you know like that would break it up and it'd give them some feel good giving back and it you know they're donating to a purpose you know and or a mission so but having some sort of mission in mind and don't you know community aspect so yeah. i'm trying to figure that out and figure out if we can do that we have something here um it's like right it's like aid or something it's some sort of aid here with the um homeowners builders association um it's homemade or something like that but i want to figure out how to get involved with that stuff and then have the guys break up their time from regular installs and just go support like community stuff for a day. Nice. I don't know if anybody does that. Sounds like the sort of thing Bill might be have going on. Yeah, we do. We do lots of stuff like that. Lots. We were supposed to be in Charlotte today for a golf uh, remodeling association golf tournament. Obviously it got rained out and canceled. Um, I just got off the phone today connecting with Make a, Make a Wish, and I'm going to work with the local radio station and do a music fund to raise raise money for the local Make a Wish chapters. We did it about six years ago. We raised twenty five thousand dollars in one day, so it's enough to grant five wishes. But you know, if you get your company to be part of that and then have guys volunteer their time to answer the phones and collect donations or something like that. They feel really good about it, especially if they have kids. Then it's uh, it's great. But you can do stuff like Humane Society uh, to help with dogs or old people, or whatever. You know, just pick a charity, local children's hospital. I mean, we do that often. I've had girls in my office just two weeks ago ask, says, can we round up something where we'd like to do a community involvement project? So... I, I said I always stayed away because I don't want to force them into stuff. They've got family lives, and they're the ones that are asking me if they could do it. They want to be proud and and mm -hmm. give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And it could be something simple as mentoring some kids at your local technical school. Have them come out on a job site and understand glazing. You might pick up. You know, we picked up a really good installer from the local high school that graduated this past year. Honestly. You would, he was in a welding shop. Uh, I bought the materials and they welded up our uh, wrought iron displays for our showrooms. And he went to, he delivered them back. And when he came over, he saw what we did with them and we put our doors on them. And he says, you know, I'd really like to work here when I got out of school. So he went through our training process and he's, you know, he's two months in right now. Wow. And he's That's doing well. Cool. That's he's doing well. Yeah. That's brilliant. It is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's all sorts of things you can do. All sorts. I mean, yeah, it takes a while to think about it, but 
just making the connections in the community helps you a lot. The Make-A-Wish one's fantastic, mm -hmm. truly fantastic. Yeah, you know, it really doesn't surprise me when you when you say, though, that um, that your guys are are coming up with these ideas on their own, because I know that you've created a culture of that at your company of giving back to the community. And, I, you know, I see like regularly yeah. that's something yeah. that you're doing. So you're modeling that. Sure. You know, as a leader, as kind of the patriarch, you know, of your company. And then naturally, um, you know, people in that organization look up to you and and want to to kind of emulate that. And that's that's incredible. I mean, you know, shower doors are cool, you know. <laughs> and they're they're it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good product, you know, but it's like what lives aren't being changed, you know, by shower doors, you know. But um, but you can. I'll, cha I'll challenge you on that, Chris. I think lives aren't. <laughs> I no, I truly do. Cool, go for it, man. Tell me about take, it. Take a look at the trades out there. You got your your. I mean, your, the average workers. They got your sheet rockers and painters and carpet guys and flooring guys. If I was to do any of those technical trades, I'd take class in a heartbeat, an absolute heartbeat. And there's nothing better than when you finish that job because you're at the end of the job. Everybody else has already done the heavy lifting, right? And you're doing the class at the end. And you get a good reward when that job is done. And I think it does change lives. People like it. And once you're in the glass business, it's hard to get out. It's, it's got its grips sure. in you. And I see a lot of guys, <laughs> if they leave us, they just go to another glass shop. They don't, they so, don't let change me, trades. Let me, you, let me ask you a question. I agree 100% with you. But don't you guys think that the glazing industry is kind of like the 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 stepchild in terms of trades? At least I feel that way up here. So, you know, you see electricians, you see carpentry, you see masonry, um, et cetera. I've gone to the trade schools, participated in like mock interviews for these young kids that are coming out of school. And half of them don't even know what they've never heard the term glazing. Mm -hmm. You know, my standard line is look at every building in town. Look across the street. Look out this window right now. What are you looking through? You're looking through glass. Yeah. Right? And 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 I use examples of two young guys that I had working for me for a couple of years that they decided they want to go live the life up in Alaska. They're up there thriving as glazers. You know, yeah. it's a trade you can take anywhere. And so um, but I just I get frustrated, I guess. I've been in this 20 years, but I get frustrated by the fact that, you you know, we, I pay health insurance. I pay 401k you know, all the benefits like you guys do. And and and. And I think I pay a pretty competitive, solid salary, but yet people are like, oh, "What? What the hell do you do? Well, you know, what's a what's a glazer?" What? And that just that just frustrates me. It seems like there's been this lack. I get motivated by it, but it's it seems like that message hasn't been spread out like the other trades have. Well, I, until recently, I think the industry has allowed that to happen. Everybody's been quiet. You got groups like this where we can talk about it and say, "You know what? We are we're." We're king shits in this industry. Yeah, we're we legit. are. Yeah, we're definitely legit. And take a look at some of these doors that people go to Home Depot and they do it themselves. Totally different than when you have a professional do it. So it's up to us to raise the bar. Yeah, the bar is low. It's a, it's an easy job for us, right? But then we got to raise it again and again. And it's getting the word out and getting the kids out of school where they go back and talk to their buddies at school and say, you know, this is a great place to work. It really is. Mm -hmm. I'll take lugging glass, few panels of glass in a house as opposed to lugging sheetrock all day long or mm -hmm. putting roof tiles up on a roof. You take a look at some of the other trades, man, it'll beat you up quick. Yeah. You can get guys working to you, you know, to the 40s and 50s, then they start getting burned out. Mm -hmm. But some of the other trades, you, they got a really short life. Yeah. yeah, think about those tile guys working on their hands and knees all day, like tiling floors, man, that's that's brutal i feel yeah bad. you ever shake their hands it's like you're shaking hands with the incredible hulk it's all <laughs> crusty because the the tile and stuff just Ooh, takes the moisture rough. out of it yeah, yeah. dirty yeah, yeah. Oh. we can do a job and go home and still have clean hands and you know oh. be presentable yeah. and nobody knows you're in the trades you know and i think that's something too that we can do as a group um we can talk about maybe uh some kind of a campaign, some kind of a marketing campaign, just like to the general public. I uh, was talking about what we do, 
you know, we could kind of make, uh, make kind of like a YouTube commercial or something, 60 seconds long or something with different members just talking about, you know, how much th they love doing this, this kind of a work. Um, and I think we could capture something like that. If we all pitch in a little bit. I mean, this is something maybe the co-op could do. That um, would be. Um, you know what I mean? It's like make some marketing Ooh. things that we can just, you know, put on, put on YouTube um, just to tell people about, hey, we're glazed, this is what a glazer is, you know, this is what we do. And uh and this you know, this is why I love it, what's so cool about it, and just the rewards you get of having done this beautiful work, being able to take a picture of it and share it on Instagram or whatever, you know. Um I think that would be a valuable thing to to do. That's, Chris, that's an outstanding idea and an outstanding goal. I just recently returned from New York City down in Manhattan. And, you know, when you walk, you cannot look at a building, whether it's the old building or the new ones down in Hudson Yards, where all you see is glass. So in, you walk in a building, you see interior glass walls, you know. Um, and, I mean, it, to me, it dominates. Glass dominates the, the, uh, the streetscape. It dominates yeah. interiors now. And I just don't, I think our industry has... This might sound dramatic, but I think it's failed in the promotion of of the trade, of the talent that it takes, and you know the expertise that's required for glazing. All the other ones get all this recognition, and uh, yeah. um, and I guess I'm frustrated by the whole thing. No, I think that's been true, like my whole life. Um, you know, yeah, my whole life is like uh, when someone would ask me what I did, and I would just say I was a blazer, and they were like, "What's a blazer?" Yeah, and and I think uh, you know, um, Dustin Anderson did you know a pretty good job at you know putting the word glazer out there when he had you know kind of the spotlight for a little while. Um, he you know he always had that T-shirt you know that said glazer was like the dictionary definition or whatever. Um, that was cool. So that that brought a little bit of attention to to what we do. Um, but I think that's what we need more of, of just yeah. really like letting people know. I mean, I think, yeah, we have we have failed as an industry to to make ourselves known. It's like, what's a glazer? You know, a glazer is to glass what a carpenter is to wood. That's what I that would be my stock answer. Glazer yeah. is to glass what a carpenter is to wood. Hey guys, um, oh, okay. we, we, that's pretty good. We have one of the best voices in the country with Max Perlstein. How many guys oh, yeah. pick up the phone or send him a text or send him an email, mm -hmm. giving him some information about what we do? Because he's the one that helps raise the bar. He really does. Yeah. But then you can take his blog, copy it, and post. use it as your own social media post. You know, yeah. it, it just makes more awareness to glazing. We happen to do interior glass, but there's a lot of guys that do exterior glass or curtain wall or whatever else it is. I'm trying to get Max to on his blog spot to not to stop showing only curtain wall. I mean, right, it, right. Every week it's the big projects. Yeah, they're beautiful and they're big, but how about the interior glass? There's a guy on this group, uh, Sean Farrell, does a lot of amazing uh, interior glass works. That should be yeah. featured. You know, he does shower doors, but he he's does other glass as well. Yeah, he's a good marketer. He is. He, he's really good at like <laughs> cap capturing that. Like he's got a real talent for that. Actually, we should hit him up. Yeah, he should be on this. this man because he's got that natural that natural talent. And of course, you know, Keith Dobbin too. You know, I can't. You know, <laughs> he, you know, he's probably he's out got... filming. He's filming some more. He just did some with Donna yesterday. He's yeah. Probably... Who was that tonight. guy's name? Max. Max, what? Max Who are you Pearl referring to? Max Pearlstein. Pearlstein. Who's that? So he's Who's the voice that? of the yeah. He's he the is. voice of the glass industry. Who's that? <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. No. No. That's cool. I'm just, I'm just teasing you. No. Max is awesome. He is like salt of the earth, man. Super. Like the best guy you'll ever meet. Um, if you need anything, if you reach out to him, he's always just like stoked to help. And he's a um, he's a consultant. He's a glazing consultant. He's with uh, the National Glass Association. Um, his um, look in the his chat. Blog, his blog is called From the Fabricator, and he writes a weekly blog. He also has a YouTube channel 
where he interviews people from the industry, like all across the industry. He's even interviewed me on there. So, I mean, that's how diverse it is. Um, but uh, yeah, super, super great guy. He's very, very knowledgeable about everything that's going on. If, uh, if something's coming, he knows about it. Dan, so, you want to at least introduce yourself to him? Get, get on his radar? Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of anything that you do within the community, just let him know about it. And he, he shares it through the whole industry. Mm -hmm. So it'll come out on his blog, you know, he'll fit it in. If it's bold and he'll wait for another week, but the guy's great. I mean, that's, yeah. that's his job is to promote the glass industry. That's his job. Yeah. Hey, Bill, National... I don't know if you remember, but that's how I met you is through Max yeah. Pearlstein at glass building <laughs> and, uh, in uh, Atlanta, he, he Atlanta. Every, and he said, "Do you know Bill Dobbin?" And I said, "No." But anyhow, he is. I echo everything else they're saying, Daniel. He is an outstanding dude, uh, yeah. and enthusiastic, a great cheerleader for our industry. So, Dan, in the chat, Robert Robert just put a YouTube link in there. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah. that's Max. But Robert, if you can get a, a photo of him and put it in like a still photo. Um, so, so Max, <laughs> if you go to the, I mean, if you go to the glass show, Daniel, at least you can recognize him. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, have to stand I, in line for a minute, say hi. But. Hey, you've got a family <laughs> business. He probably knows your parents. If you're in a family yeah. business, and yeah, been in probably. Mm, yeah, but and I appreciate all this information because that's why I joined this is to learn stuff like this. Like you huh? say, well, like basically, it's like why do I not know this guy? And now I'm learning about him and. Honestly, I don't know if my family knows about them. They very content and com very content. We'll say content. Um, <laughs> well, if, you, that. if you need an introduction, myself or Chris or uh, almost everybody on here knows them well enough to be able to get you an introduction if you need. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm I'm going to research now. That's some I've probably got something to do. So it's good. <laughs> Well, you don't have to do it too hard. Just go in the chat. Robert's already done yeah. it. <laughs> I, have, I have to figure out how to access this chat stuff after the calls ended. Oh, I, I do don't this think on you my... can. I, I know. Can I, asked, I asked Robert about this a while back, how to access the comments from the phone call, because I do this on my phone. So Bob's I, I not in his head. I don't right, know too right. much how to access this stuff afterwards, and I don't want to deviate too much from the phone screen while I'm on this. So... I've lost stuff that I wanted to reference before, but Got it. so I have all the chats uh, in a file afterwards, so I can just copy paste them into the Facebook thread. So every week, Chris posts in the Facebook group uh, a reminder for the call. So I'll just put it in the comments of that call. So someone will have the entire tax, uh, chat thread broken down for you. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Rob. You're awesome. We got some talent in here. I mean, not just like glass talent, you know, but like we got like a lot of like peripheral skills, man. I mean, it's like it's 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 amazing because um, all of us are kind of, you know, we do glass, but we almost everybody does something else too. Right. So. So I think we can um, I think we could put together something like that, just a quick a little promotional thing uh, that that we could run on social media and, and, you know, post it for free all around, but then also maybe have a little bit of a budget to, uh, to make sure that those, those run and just something really concise. It's catchy. It'll catch people's attention. That'll explain what we do and maybe even attract, you know, young people, you know, to consider, Hey, maybe, maybe this would be a possibility for, for a career for me. Who knows? So last, well, um, go ahead, Dan. I was going to say, Bill, you mentioned you worked with a high school. I had a friend in the roofing industry who, you know, works with our, you know, from our high school with the um, construction guy, you know, but like, what's your, how do you approach a school and offer to like maybe supply donations and stuff like that to a school in order to essentially get in with the younger kids that are graduating to offer them apprenticeships and stuff like that? What is an approach to that? And how do you go about that? Because that's obviously an easy way to get somebody who's not going into college and just get them in as an apprentice or as a helper and learning stuff. And, you know, that's, you know, what's the approach to that and how do you approach it? If anybody's done it. Uh, I, I have three ways in one is through the super 
superintendent's office, they're always open for business input. Most uh, high schools or secondary education has an office for career development. So you can get involved through the superintendent. If you have a local high school that you know has a career uh, and trades program, you can go directly to the principal at that high school. And the third thing is if you happen to know a teacher that's in that program, they'll connect you through the principal. What uh, the superintendent usually allows the principal to make the decision of who they can partner with. So if you know that principal or go ahead and make friends with the principal and ask for, this is a great time of year. They're getting ready to open school in a week or two, right? Mm -hmm. This would be a great time that they could meet with you and align partnerships. It's the best time. The other thing we did, Dan, I don't know how many guys know about it, but I was on the Economic Development Council here and one of the projects they put me in charge of was coming up with this workforce signing day where you know how kids that go to uh, high school and they're gonna go to college and they get a, a scholarship to play football or everything. Down in the gymnasium, they have a big signing day. This kid's going to Michigan, this kid's going to Florida. So they never did anything for kids that were going directly into the workforce. So we started a workforce signing day. So we got all the career and education counselors within the district to get us a list of kids that they know are not going to college. So whether they go into military, they go to their family business, or if they're going to work at McDonald's, it doesn't really matter. We had a, a celebration for them. And it was really cool because yeah. we were able to connect quite a few kids with employers. There was a girl who wanted to be a nurse and Lee Health hired her and paid for her schooling. A kid that wanted to go into real estate, one of the realtors stepped up and paid for him to go to real estate school. Another kid wanted to do uh, heating and air conditioning. And there was like five air conditioning guys were bidding to get him. So, you know, you can find the right thing. You got, they have culinary departments and a lot of local restaurants and like country clubs. They need people on the, on the food lines. And so we, as an economic development council, connected them together. So we brought in the country clubs, the food and beverage directors, to meet with the culinary director and see what kids are interested in going right in for training. So we did the same thing with glass, with electricians uh, and all the different trades. Uh, and then COVID got in the way and it took the air out of this thing. We were on a roll and we're trying to put it back together. We were supposed to do it last year and they fired the superintendent. So it didn't happen last year, but we'll get it going this year. How, how originally did that come about? How did that group form like with all those different people involved I, that I, I went to the career and education department who already had a list of there was a guy that was already involved with the schools doing a, a mechanicals like heating and air conditioning uh and he was doing a lot of internships with those kids i went to the local car dealers because they were looking for mechanics we went to the marinas they, they were looking for uh marine mechanics kids to work on boat engines and all and then it just it just took off from there. But there was, it was all sorts of businesses. I had a, a friend of mine owns a sign business down the street and they needed people to help do signs. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's small signs, not, you know, not the big ones outside, but just, you know, the ones where you can go in and order uh, 15 of the stick in the ground signs and they print them up. So mm -hmm. there's all sorts of business. And the, the whole idea is just trying to get kids involved in business. And then hopefully if we get our, our pick of somebody who wants to go into trades, that's great. Because like our business, we have office staff that does order entry and accounting. We have salespeople. I have truck drivers. I have warehouse guys that run a machine. I have maintenance guys. And then we have shower door installers. Then I have purchasing, management, uh, HR. So, the, you know, it's not just shower doors. We have a wide variety. I got marketing guys. I, I picked up a graphic designer out of high school. You know, these kids, if they're good, all they need is a cell phone and they can do your TikTok videos in a heartbeat. <laughs> you, know? you know, you just got to promote yourself. You got to be a good glazer, right? You got to come through in the clutch when the guys need you. But hey, you could be the best glazer in the world. If nobody knows about you, it doesn't help. If you don't make sales and get the phone rings, it doesn't do any good. So you've got to make the phone ring and you've got to close deals. It takes a whole team, but... Yeah. It's your job as the coach of this team 
to get the best players and then put them in the right positions. And that goes back to what Mike was talking about. That's how you motivate them. I mean, he's probably got guys that may not be right for shower doors. It just for some reason, but maybe they're a good shop guy. Maybe uh, mm -hmm. there's something else. And it's, it's Mike's job to find out what's their strength. And if that's not their strength, find a position where their strength will show through. Don't, don't call it a deficiency or, uh, you know, you're not good at this. Just find what he is good at and focus on that. And you'll get the best out of your team because the guy's attitude is going to be great if he's doing something that he's good at. Mm -hmm. You put him in a job where he's not happy and he's not good at it, you're not going to get the best out of him. I see in sports all the time, right? This guy's a mediocre player for this team, and they trade him to another team, and then he flourishes. Why? It's the environment he's in. It's the position he's in. It's the role that he's playing. Good coaches know that. you got to put him in the right role. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, it, it's well, true. Yeah. Really, it's so similar to sports. It's so similar. It is. I mean, It is. It's an athletic activity. You know, you're I mean. a business owner. You might as well be the coach. You've got to steer the ship in the right direction. You're not doing, you know, the best coach in football is not out there snapping or blocking or tackling, right? He's organizing and putting the guys in the right thing and giving the team the, the direction to go in. That's what it's about. Right. They'll follow. Just give them that clear direction. Absolutely. Love it. And if they can have input in it, that's even better. You know, you sit down and you have a meeting with them every so often and say, hey, guys, give me your feedback. How do we how can we grow this company together so we can all make money? Boy, you'll hear all sorts of things. But be open to it, too. Don't shoot them down in public because then you'll never hear from them again. <laughs> right. Take it under advisement. Take it down and says, let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been in jobs where we didn't like. We did it for the paycheck. Mm -hmm. Once you got a job you liked, then you really flourish. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is, right? I believe it. That's true. It's true. You know, I mean, it's like uh, life is short. Man. It's way too short to do something that you hate just for a paycheck, you know? So, I mean, if you can, uh, if there's anything you can do to make a person's job more enjoyable, you're really doing a service. To humanity i think you know i mean that's a person who's going to go home and treat treat his dog better you know treat his wife better you know it's going to be a better citizen if he's happier i mean we've all gone to some place you know a restaurant or a coffee shop whatever and been like may not say it out loud but you know you're thinking it's like dude you hate your job don't you you know i mean because it's like it's obvious that they that they just don't would rather be any place else, you know. The kind of service you get from a person like that is not worth tipping for. That's right. That's right. So I mean, hey, uh, Dana made a comment in the chat that everybody should be aware of if they haven't yet, because like every single glass supplier is coming out with a price increase, and it's going to hit within two to three weeks. I wonder how big of an increase it's going to be. I, I was listening to 10 to 12 percent. That's wow. what they told me also. That's pretty significant. Yeah. Well, if you remember, what was it, three years ago, it was the 40 percent one. We were yeah. all cringing. It, it didn't end up 40 percent, but yeah. it was close. That's what they were prepping us for. Yeah, yeah, right. I think, it, I think it ended up being more than 40 because it happened twice. That year. That's what they did. And the end. They broke it into two parts, okay. and so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they tried to soften the blow and made it harder. They made up for it. You're absolutely yeah, right. Exactly. Um, with, without um, being on this phone call, where else, other than when they send you a price increase letter, where are you hearing about this stuff? How can you stay informed about it? Your supplier should give it to you. Your vendor. You should have, you should have already gotten a notice from your fabricator. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we have. We're D3, right? So we're fabricating mm -hmm. also. So we already got it from Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Pilkington, and then we have to change our price list for what we wholesale out. And then I then on my shower door side, we have to then adjust our prices on that side. Yeah. 
and we use we use Old Castle Gardner and some other people, and we haven't gotten anything yet that I know of. Well, and is this it. is this supposed to be on all glass products? Mirrors too? Uh, I don't know about well, we don't do mirrors, so I don't uh, I can't yeah. tell you that. And I don't even think Pilkington does mirrors, so I don't know. But mirrors made from flat glass, so that your mirror suppliers buying it from the suppliers. So I wouldn't doubt it. It's all gonna come out in the wash one way or another, right? Yeah. Mm. Hey, I wanna um welcome Ryan. Ryan to the call. Ryan has never been on the call before. Nice. Um, so welcome, man. I see you're kind of shy, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Sometimes you just got to kind of, you know, show up and hang out <laughs> for one or two calls, but feel free to jump in, um, say hi, uh, ask a question, give us your opinion. We've all got opinions. We like to give them. So, I don't reckon. I don't recognize Kevin either. Kevin. Kev, Kevin Bricking. He's right next to Ryan on the list here. I did get a response from Ryan. He's Ryan with Alpha Omega Hardware out of uh, and, and Glass out of Utah. Long time listener, first time caller. I have not heard back from Mister Kevin, but I've been close eye him to make sure he's not a, a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ready to bounce him. Yeah. <laughs> Who let them in? That's right. That's right. Cool. Well, what else? We've got a couple of minutes. Anything else? Hey, hey, has anybody seen the new uh, color, uh, hardware finishes from CRL? The the matte gunmetal and bunch yeah, of I just kind of brass. I just got all my samples in today. I ordered uh, I ordered sample clips of all of them. I just got all eight of them in today. They, some of them are look. some of them are nice. They're nice. Yeah. Some of them are nice. A couple of them are so close to some of the other finishes. I mean, it's so hard to tell the difference. Like they have a modern, I think it's a modern gold. It's like mm -hmm. half a shade darker than a satin brass. And they have one called a dark brush bronze or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit darker than the the brush bronze that we're getting now. Um the French gold is pretty nice. The rose gold was really, was a really nice looking finish. Where'd you get these from, mm -hmm. Brian? Uh, C.R. Lawrence. Okay, so now are all is all of their hardware going to be available in all of these finishes all the time? No. Um, yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> right now they have Vienna hinges and Cologne hinges. Um, I don't know if they have pivots available yet. Um, it's that same old game of like, okay, let's see if I can find a whole set of hardware right? to make That's a shower the same door finish, work, yeah. right? And then it's yeah. like, well, you can have this hand, but you can't have any of these other handles. You can have yeah. this don't particular. don't hold your breath. Don't yeah. hold your breath. They told me they didn't have the, the clips available though yet. Just channel those guys. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, I ordered them. I ordered the clips last the beginning of last week monday last week i think and the, the french gold was available immediately and then the rest of them came in um yesterday i got the email yesterday that they were in so we went down i went down and picked them up today well cool that's something new It'd be fun to explore that yeah, i wonder if they're going to update those little uh sample books with the color chips yeah, they get they got new color chains, new sample chains. Uh, the sample chains I was told are on back order until like mid to late September. Gotcha. They're not they bigger up, too. They updated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's larger size. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for showing up, and uh, have a great rest of your week. We'll see you back here next Wednesday.